Truth can only be apprehended by the conquest of self. Blessedness can only be arrived at by overcoming the lower nature. The way to truth is barred only by yourself. The only enemies that can actually hinder you are your own passions and delusions. Until you realize this and commence to cleanse your hearts, you will not find the path which leads to knowledge and peace. Until passion is transcended, truth remains unknown. This is the divine law. You can't keep your passions and have truth as well. Ignorance isn't slain until selfishness is dead. The overcoming of self is no mystical theory, but a very real and practical thing. It's a process which must be pursued daily and hourly, with unswerving faith and undaunted resolution, if any measure of success is to be achieved. The process is one of orderly growth, having its sequential stages like the growth of a tree. And as fruits can only be produced by carefully and patiently training the tree, even so, the pure and satisfying fruits of holiness can only be obtained by faithfully and patiently training the mind in the growth of right thought and conduct. There are five steps in the overcoming of passion, which includes all bad habits and particular forms of wrongdoing, which I will call 1. Repression 2. Endurance 3. Elimination 4. Understanding and 5. Victory All of these stages requiring grace which is bestowed upon you in direct proportion to the effort made. For we cannot do anything of ourselves, but the effort, the intention, brings the grace. And self-purification therefore becomes a collaboration between the aspiring soul and the Holy Spirit. When you fail to overcome your sins, your ignorance, it's because you try to begin at the wrong end. You want to have the stage of victory without passing through the previous four stages. You're in the position of a gardener who wants to produce good fruit without training and attending to his trees. Repression consists in checking and controlling the wrong act, such as an outburst of temper, a hasty or unkind word, a selfish indulgence, etc., and not allowing it to take actual form. This is equivalent to the gardener nipping off the useless buds and branches from his tree, it's an absolutely necessary process, but a painful one. The tree bleeds while undergoing the process, and the gardener knows that it mustn't be taxed too severely. The heart also bleeds when it first refuses to return passion for passion, when it ceases to defend and justify itself. It's the process of mortifying the members of which St. Paul speaks. But this repression is only the beginning of self-conquest. When it's made an end in itself and there's no objective of finally purifying the heart, that is a state of hypocrisy, a hiding of one's true nature, and striving to appear better in the eyes of others than one really is. In that case, it's an evil or an ignorance. But when adopted as the first stage towards complete self-purification, it is good. Its practice leads to the second stage of endurance, or forbearance, in which one silently endures the pain which arises in the mind when it's brought in contact with certain actions and attitudes of other minds towards you. As success is attained in this stage, you'll come to see that all of your pain actually arises in your own weaknesses and not in the wrong attitudes of others towards you these latter being merely the means by which your ignorance is brought to the surface and shown to you. You then gradually exonerate all others from blame in your falls and lapses of conduct and accuse only yourself, and so learn to love those who unconsciously reveal to you your sins, ignorance and shortcomings. Having passed through these two stages of self-crucifixion, the disciple, you, Enter the third, that of elimination, in which the wrong thought which lay behind the wrong act is cast from the mind immediately it appears. At this stage, conscious strength and holy joy begin to take the place of pain, and the mind, having become comparatively calm, you are able to gain a deeper insight into the complexities of your own mind, 
and then to understand the inception, growth, and outworking of sin or ignorance. This is the stage of understanding. Perfection in understanding leads to the final conquest of self, a conquest so complete that the sin can no more rise in the mind even as a thought or impression. For when the knowledge of sin is complete, when the knowledge of ignorance is complete, when it's known in its totality from its inception as a seed in the mind to its ripened outgrowth as action and consequence, then it can no more be allowed a place in the life, but is abandoned forever. Then the mind is at peace. The wrong acts of others no longer arouse wrong and pain in your mind, in the mind of the disciple. You are glad and calm and wise. You're filled with love and blessedness abides with you. And this is victory.